Let me explain. In 2008, I lost everything with the market recession, the mortgage meltdown. I lost everything. And I had to figure out how to get better. I had to figure out how to make improvements and how to like get back on track. A lot of people left the business. So a lot of people got out of the mortgage business. I didn't. I stayed in the mortgage business. And I just said, you know what? I'm not a quitter. Everything that I do is 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 with a non-quitting mentality. I have a baby, a baby girl. I'm not going to quit on her. I have another baby. I'm not going to quit on her. I get married. I'm not going to quit on my wife. I start a business and it's extremely hard. I'm not going to quit on my business. I'm not going to quit on my second business, on my third business. I get into everything with the mentality that I'm never going to quit. So this has this has been one of my key ingredients to success ever since uh, I can remember like my entire life ever ever since my dad told me when I was six years old if you want to get what you want to get which at the time was I want to become so successful where I live in a big house in Beverly Hills and drive a Ferrari then you're gonna do it as long as you work hard and you don't become a quitter you can't become a quitter in anything okay the only thing you quit on are bad things okay like like uh, like anything that's unethical. Now, when I was in when I was back in 2008, I went through a huge struggle, and I needed to find out like how am I gonna beat this? How am I gonna conquer uh, my mortgage success back? How can I get it back? When a lot of people were running out of the business and quitting, I decided to stay. So back then, my income before the market crash was. About two hundred and forty thousand, and it dropped to uh, actually fifty-one thousand. So two thousand nine, I only made fifty-one thousand, and that's a big deal for somebody that was used to making two hundred forty thousand. The lifestyle that I had, I, I used to drive an S five fifty. I used to have a really beautiful house in Sierra Madre, and I lost it. And what I had to do was do more. I needed to find out how to do more. I was working with one agent. I stayed in the business. I made 51,000. I think I closed about 13 deals that year. And uh, this is when all the, when uh, you couldn't do any more, like all the financing was taken away from us. So the only bad, the only financing we could do was FHA. We had to go back to the FHA to the basics because they took away, they took away the, the negative uh the option arm loans they took away the stated income loans they took away all the all those loans for those of you that are new in the business you probably don't know or haven't heard about those uh but they they used to exist those loans for example the negative uh, the negative uh option arm uh, loans were loans where you where the bank gave you uh for these overpriced homes the bank gave you these loans for overpriced million dollar homes and you paid a negative payment so let's say the payment for a million dollars was six thousand you would pay three thousand a month and the three thousand that was that you were short would go back into your principal balance so your principal balance would be increasing every month the reason for this is because prices were going up like bananas so everybody's price was going up people were cashing out getting a bunch of money prices were kept going up loans were a hundred percent fine we had a hundred percent financing for all these loans stated income people that worked at mcdonald's could be could, could state that their managers and make a hundred grand a year and qualify for a four five six seven seven hundred thousand dollar loan it was ridiculous so a lot of people and, and then the loan officers the loan agents were making a ton of money with with these loans because they were getting paid double instead of making three points three percent uh, they were making six point six percent. A point means a percentage for those of you that are not familiar with with the mortgage industry. So these people were making a lot of money. People that were just dropping out of uh, school and becoming loan officers, and people that were uh, working at uh, different uh, industries and were just jumping into the mortgage world and making a lot of money. So back then, uh, what happened was. I stayed in the business and I became I was homeless because I lost everything. So I used to sleep in my car, my Ford Explorer and Sil stayed with me. Sorry about that finger. But Sil stayed with me and we slept in the Ford Explorer for a period of about 2 months as we got our our uh, back on track and um, and 
there's way more to the story, but next year, uh, 2010, I made a hundred grand. So I made, I went from 51,000 to a hundred grand uh, very quickly. And then I started just growing from there. I started making, uh, growing exponentially. And every year I was going back and looking at my metrics from back then what made it what what made me get more uh more business and make more money and be able to help more people was just doing more doing more but a lot of you are capped because you can't do any more you know you, you can't do any more because you're waking up extremely early and you're going to sleep extremely late so even if you cut all the bullshit you're gonna get capped you're gonna be capped at a at a, at a place when you just don't have more hours and you have to do more and how do you do more? Like I started working with more agents. So instead of working with one agent, one realtor, I was working with five, six, seven realtors. I never worked for more uh, with more than, than six, seven realtors. So if you're a lender out there, loan originator, uh, this is based on my results and based on my success and based on how I became a millionaire, multi-millionaire by doing this. You can work with 20 agents, okay? Get rid of all these agents, realtors, and work with only six to seven realtors. That's all you need. You just need six, seven realtors, maybe five realtors, and get good realtors. Don't get all these bullshit realtors that are gonna ask you for kickbacks. I never gave any kickbacks to any of these realtors, and the ones that, I, that, that wanted kickbacks and wanted to be unethical, I got rid of them. I fired my realtors. So if you're working with unethical realtors that are broke, and want to make some of your kickback money, then dump these realtors. These realtors are are are, are bad. You know they're they're horrible, horrible for the, for this industry. So, work with good agents, solid agents that produce. Offer them value. Give them value. Do open houses with them on over the weekends, and and keep those five, six, seven realtors max. Seven realtors. This is based on my results. I was going through my metrics from back in the day. So no more than seven realtors, solid ones, and get all your business from them. I went from uh, 51,000 to making over a million dollars 2016. So by growing exponentially, okay? I was able to do three million uh, in production and commissions. I got paid $3 million in commissions by just working with six, seven realtors. You don't need any more, any more than this. You have to grow, and, and then what you do is you're, you're capped. So you gotta start hiring people. So I never made, I got up to a million uh, just by myself, just me and Sil, but I wasn't able to get to three mil until I started growing my team. You gotta grow a solid team. You can't have a, uh, a, a weak team. So if you're the person that's paying your assistant 1500 bucks, $2,500 a month, uh, it's not gonna work, okay? It's not gonna work. You gotta hire somebody, an assistant that's gonna be top level capacity is going to be like top of the line capacity and how do you do that you got to find somebody that you're willing to pay five thousand a month five thousand a month plus okay a five thousand a month plus person is gonna cost you more money but it's gonna make you more money because this is gonna be a person that's gonna be top notch you can't grow you won't grow and you won't get to that next level by hiring average people okay you, you need to hire powerful people. You got to pay them well. You got to pay them well. You got to put them on tiers. You got to pay them uh, more money if they produce more. If they help you close 20 transactions, 30 transactions, and you're making $300,000 in that month, oh well, pay them more based on their production, based on their numbers, based on, their, on the money they're bringing you. If not, they're not going to work hard. They're not going to come in early. They're not going to leave late. They're not going to be fight for you because you're not paying them well. And if you're hiring average people and you're paying them 2000 bucks, 3000 bucks a month, no wonder you're not making the money you want. No wonder you're not growing. No wonder you're not building, uh, creating wealth and, and building a solid team. So the main reason why I did very well and made millions was because I did more and you're gonna be capped when you get capped you got to start hiring people you got to start hiring powerful people and that's gonna get you to 3 million and then you're gonna get go from 3 million to 30 million and then you're gonna help build an empire a company like we are here at TMG at ambiance at driven enterprises and when you're one one day you're gonna get a piece of it you're gonna get a percentage of it and it's gonna be worth a lot because it's gonna be this company is gonna be worth billions and billions of dollars and you're gonna get a percentage percentage of that you're gonna partner up with somebody like us 
and you're gonna make a lot of money, you're gonna create wealth, but it, it all starts with you. It all starts with you being an agent, a salesperson, and then from there you grow it. And you grow it by doing more, by creating more time, by hiring powerful people, not weak people, not average people.